Hello everyone, I'm Elizabeth Shaw and this channel is all about the narcissistic personality disorder to give you more understanding of those you might have been dealing with or are dealing with in your life, how to handle narcissistic people and how to recover from narcissistic abuse. This video is about the crazy making conversations with a narcissist. Having a conversation with a narcissist can leave us with so many emotions to work through from guilt to anger, self-doubts to frustration. A conversation with a narcissist can leave us with no idea as to what just happened, whose memory is right, whose is wrong. Those conversations can leave us dumbfounded or screaming to be understood, left in tears or completely drained, utterly stunned that they had no clue and it ended up being about something we've done wrong or that we felt like we were talking and nobody was home. Conversations with a narcissist are crazy making. Narcissists are exhausting to be around or try to communicate with. The thought of a conversation with a narcissist can be utterly nerve wracking. One wrong word and they blow. And we don't even know what that wrong word was. Usually we end up walking on eggshells after so many times of the conversations in the past ending badly, which they've always blamed us for. When we do decide to brave it and to start that dreaded conversation, we're often left wishing we had never started it, doubting our very own instincts and wondering what on earth just happened, often leaving us feeling like we are the ones going crazy. We often end up questioning our own sanity, our own reality, blaming ourselves for things that perhaps never even happened. The problem is some of us are actually born into narcissism, having narcissistic parents, even on the low end of the spectrum. So we don't always learn what true love is. When we have someone hurt us that we look up to to take care of us, screaming at us, don't you know that I love you? We accept that treatment as normal, that we should never have accepted as normal. We believe that's how people show love, even though it's not how we love other people. Then when we grow and make friendships, get into relationships, we accept behavior from others as normal that we shouldn't. Making excuses, reasoning, rationalizing, and those excuses are extremely valid within our minds. Then with all the manipulation of self-doubt that they plant deep into our subconscious, it makes us all the more susceptible to further psychological abuse. We trust the words and actions of others and we don't go around manipulating others. So we assume that other people would treat us the same narcissistic people don't feel think act like we do we give them our good qualities we expect them to be reasonable and rational and work together and then when they don't respond like we would as or as kind empathetic people would we are the ones that become confused hurt disappointed angry and frustrated within our lives and with the narcissist carefully chosen gaslighting words or silent treatments we end up blaming ourselves and working harder to please them just when we think we've had enough, the narcissist will play nice, which reinforces our self-doubt that it is our fault. Nothing you or anyone ever does deserves this kind of manipulation or abuse in any way, shape or form. They are the ones with the issue. We are never to blame for their toxic, hurtful, negative behaviour or actions towards us. They are responsible for their behaviour as we are ours. And we might have done things that we are not proud of around these people. Narcissistic people know how to push the right buttons to bring out the worst in those around them then they will exaggerate any mistakes of ours while denying or downplaying any mistakes of theirs or blaming us for their mistakes while we try to look for the best in them they will point out all our flaws in us leaving us with even more self-doubts
Seven examples of tactics narcissists use for crazy making conversations. So if you do still need to communicate with one, you can recognize the manipulative game they are playing, not get drawn into it and be able to see just how predictable they genuinely are. Some are dangerous, so no contact would be a must in that situation. Number one, gaslighting, possibly one of their favorite and most commonly used manipulation tactics. As we often don't see it while living it, gaslighting will often psychologically distort our reality. It is an insidious form of mental abuse. A narcissist will purposefully not share information. They will rewrite history on us to escape accountability for their own behavior. Either by saying something that did happen, they'll tell you it never happened, or something that didn't happen, they will tell us that it did until we believe that it did, even though it didn't. They accuse us of being insecure, being sensitive, losing our minds. This is all you so we doubt our own feelings, our thoughts, question ourselves and our reality, doubting our judgment and often going to them for that reality check. They might even hide or rearrange belongings. They say things that hurt us and then come at us with, I'm only joking. So we are left overthinking, questioning ourselves, full of doubts and becoming emotionally and physically drained. How to disarm, always keep things via messages and email if possible. If it's in person, try and keep a diary, take notes and go to those notes for your own reality check. Pay attention to the wording someone uses. If they hurt your feelings and say they were joking or they didn't mean to and try to understand you and don't do it again, they made a mistake. If they repeat that behavior, it's no longer a mistake. It's who they are. Two, blame shifting. As they exploit others and the lack of empathy to care for others' feelings, they feel superior and are never to be held accountable for their own actions. They will shift the blame of everything and anything they've done that was perceived by others as hurtful, immoral or wrong onto those around them. They will justify themselves cheating on you by twisting the blame onto you. Somehow you will have made them do it. Bosses will justify using you because they pay you, even though they're not paying you to do the jobs they're asking you to do. A parent will justify ignoring you because you wouldn't break your boundaries or believe some weight on them hand and foot. Or Like most narcissistic people, they will all take the credit for things that they've not even done. Things that you've achieved, they will try and take the credit for. When we ask them a question and they take it as criticism in some way, they will change the conversation or interrupt us or silent treatment us. They will use any of our weaknesses, vulnerabilities or our insecurities and any extra that they've drilled into us over time against us. So that we go into the defensive. They'll use things that matter to us the most as they understand these are the things that we will the most passionately defend. They will guilt trip us or use something we fear as our fear helps with their control. They use each and every one of our emotions against us. They take our attention away from the original question, the original point of conversation. Then when we become frustrated, angry, emotional, and we react, they blame it all on us. They have to escape accountability so their toxic behavior disappears like magic and we're tricked into defending ourselves, then questioning ourselves and then taking on all the blame ourselves. How to disarm? Don't play. Don't ask them a question. They'll never give you an answer. If they do, it's a lie or somehow your fault or they will further manipulate. Instead, find the answers from within yourself. Remember, they don't want to compromise. They do not want your opinions. They want to win at all costs to you. Remind yourself asking them something is most often going to be pointless and will often just end up sending you around the twist leave them to it. 
three, interrupting you, as they are often preoccupied with power or success, real or imagined, huge successes or small. Those successful in life will often brag. Those not successful will blame all those around them. In the beginning with a narcissist, it might be all about you. And this is just another of their manipulation tactics to get to know our likes, our dislikes, so they can mirror us, our insecurities. So further down the line, they can use all these against us. They will use strengths against us as well as our weaknesses. After that idealization stage, suddenly the conversation will most often be all about them. They often require excessive attention. They just love to be the center of attention and talk all about themselves. They have no interest in holding a two-way conversation. And if we try to get a word in and it contradicts or criticizes the narcissist, whether we're meant to or not, they will ignore us, talk over us, raise their voice or dismiss us. While people with things like ADHD and other mental health can find conversations interesting at times and they can interrupt people, yet they don't do it in a negative way. The narcissist will intentionally interrupt us to bring the conversation straight back onto all about them. They believe they are correct, they are superior and they should be able to say and do as they please. Part of the disorder is they feel like they are superior and have to remain in control. So they do this by dominating conversations. They have no interest in compromising other people's thoughts, feelings or views. They're not interested in taking those on board. To them, it's my way or I'll make it my way. They will monopolize most conversations. They will interrupt and bring it back onto them. They will discredit anything you do say and use it as evidence against you. They will take control, avoid take it, talking about any genuine issues and avoid taking on any responsibility for their own behavior. How to disarm? If they keep taking you off topic, bring it straight back to the original point. Observe if they blame shift, provoke, talk over you or rage. Stop the conversation when they do if you can stop it safely. Never react, only respond and You only need to respond once. If they don't want to listen, they are not going to listen. You do not need to respond if they are taking you off topic as they have not responded to the situation at hand. Four, the silent treatment. This is another one of their most common methods for emotional manipulation of those around them. They believe they are special and have a sense of entitlement within themselves that all others should do as they say and they don't have the empathy to care for how they make others feel. So when we don't do as they say, they will sulk until they get their own way. When they feel criticism or they are losing power and control over others, most go for the silent treatment. They will do the present silent treatment for hours, days or weeks when we are in the home, so we're walking on eggshells around them. They will do it with friends on purpose, entirely leaving us out the conversation or the disappearing acts where they up and leave for days or weeks, all to keep dominance and control over us, as they will demand a perfect apology for things that we don't even know we're apologising for to end the silence. They would do this if you didn't accept their point of view, to avoid discussing important issues with us to avoid taking or accepting any responsibility for the things that they have or have not done to get us to do as they ask and when we do they'll reinforce our self-doubts by playing nice with us again just so we blame ourselves and then they will bring us crashing down again The silent treatment is used against us so that we feel insignificant, invalidated, insecure, vulnerable, unloved, to make us question and doubt ourselves. They usually make it so we cannot get a hold of them with the disappearing act or so we are walking on eggshells for the present silent treatment. How to disarm? There is no better way to recover from narcissistic abuse than taking that first step of no contact. And they use the silent treatment to hurt us. We use no contact to heal us. 
Don't try to reason with them. Don't try to work it out what's wrong. Write down and focus on your reality. No longer beg, plead or apologise for people who are not there for you. Just leave them be. They cannot play if you're not playing with them. They cannot fight if you're not fighting and they cannot control if they have lost control of your mind. Five, turning up the volume. When they talk over us, when they get angry and feel as though they're losing control of our minds, they will turn up the volume. They do this to shock us, confuse us, intimidate us and basically bully us into submission. This is because when we feel intimidated, our rational thinking, our best defence is weakened. We fear them. They are using more psychological warfare against us. This is when they lack the intelligence over the conversation. So they go for fear. They go for intimidation. So they have to talk louder and over us to dominate the conversation and take back their control. How to disarm, stop talking. They are not interested in your point of view. If you can find a safe window of exit, exit. And they want to scare you into taking on their opinions, breaking down your boundaries. Try to turn off your ears, go into your own mind and focus on your own opinions and thoughts and try and find a safe way out. Six, projection. Another they love to use on others is projecting what they have done, what they think or what they feel onto others. The things they do and the things they say to one person when no one is watching is entirely different to when others are watching. And there could be consequences for their actions when there could be consequences for their actions they can rein in their behavior if they choose to do so if you listen to their character assassinations of others this is actually most often the real truth of who they indeed are they will discredit credible people they will accuse people of cheating who are not cheating accuse others who will are lying who are not liars accuse people of being insecure who were just trying to listen to their instincts accuse people of being crazy who they actually drove that way accuse people of keeping their children from them when most often they don't even go to pick up the children narcissists do this when they are defensive and they project all their faults onto others they annihilate and destroy people's characters most people don't project and people's comments often resemble the truth of the person they are speaking about if they are discussing somebody they are not outright lies narcissistic people tell outright lies but they tell them with such truth telling it's very difficult to see the bigger picture seven triangulation this is when they will talk about what someone else has done to get us to break down our boundaries and also do it for them they will lie about what others have said to divide and conquer and get us isolated from all support how to disarm know your worth and your boundaries just because someone else would do something does not matter you are not them any lies try to get the third person and the narcissist together and then ask them about it and you'll see the reaction from the narcissist as they try to scramble to do damage control eight the topic switch when you're happily discussing something then we we either don't agree with their point of view or they feel criticized or we've asked them about something they didn't want us to know about or didn't realize we knew about so to gain control and to win as that's what narcissistic people want they want to win and be in control they'll suddenly switch the conversation on to something else entirely usually something we've done wrong in their eyes or something we haven't done for them or they will chip away at one of our insecurities they project out a load of word salad to provoke us confuse us hurt us and upset us suddenly we end up being in the defensive mode and the original conversation has completely disappeared then we get blamed for everything for defending ourselves or we're reduced to tears and they sit back almost looking pleased and watch us cry while they've got a smirk on the face and they are still blaming us or they'll stomp out of that door.
How to disarm, again, observe what they do and what they switch it on to. Bring it back to the original conversation. If they don't want to, leave them to it. Let them word spew to themselves and take no part in the conversation. Nine, playing the victim. When they're not playing the hero, they will pity play into the role of the victim. They will never be the villain. They do this to avoid taking responsibility, to avoid any accountability and to avoid their actual abusive behaviours and to cover them up. They know others are kind, caring, compassionate and they will play on that to further their advantage over people, to gain flying monkeys and control others' opinions or while hiding their true selves. When we're upset over a broken promise or something they have done, they will play the victim and project something we've done that hurt them more, how we don't give them attention, how they believe they deserve our sympathy, how we are insecure or selfish, when in reality it's us that, that are struggling by being around these kinds of people. We end up lowering our boundaries, feeling sorry for them, forgiving them. They they guilt trip us. They're, when they're playing victim, it's to use our guilt against us. Even when we've got nothing to feel guilty about, they will find a way to make us feel guilty so that we break down our boundaries and do as they please. Whatever happens to us, they will have always had worse happen to them. How to disarm? Remember why the conversation started. Stop listening to them and focus on the original discussion, the original problem, the original topic. Don't look to them to understand or to empathise or to help. Look to yourself and what you need to do to stop the situation. Look to caring people who will reassure you and help you. I shall add the video into the description on why a conversation is so difficult with the narcissist, a bit more on their cognitive thinking skills, which is why conversations can be so tricky with a narcissistic person and why it's wise not to argue with a narcissist. I shall also add the links to where you can find me on social media and the links to the online courses that do have available. If anyone has any questions, please do add them into the comments. And if you do find the information on this channel helpful, please do subscribe, like, comment, share the information. We are individuals, so it's all about finding the people that help us, the people that we can relate to, the people that can give us the techniques and the reasoning and the rational thinking to be able to move forward with our lives and leave the painful past in the past. Thank you for listening. Bye.